Greetings, welcome back, adventurers. Eric's UK here with another vid. Um, this is a topic that sort of come to mind. Um, talking to some friends over the last, I don't know how long. Um, and also from um, talking to people, people I know who aren't gamers. Um, some of whom have looked into it and some of whom haven't. Because a general sort of thing that comes out is it's an expensive hobby. Hobby gaming soaks up a lot of time, it soaks up a lot of money. And that's why you know some people won't get into it. Okay, time, can't really answer on that. You get as much out of something as you put into it. And it doesn't matter whether that's um, hobby gaming or gardening or whatever it is you're interested in. If you want to get something out of it, out of your interest, it will take up your time. Um, Money-wise, though, every sort of aspect of hobby gaming is different. Um, if I start with role-playing games first, role-playing is not an expensive hobby at all. Um, generally, if you look at something like Dungeons and Dragons, which is a game that a lot of people play, it's the gateway game to get people into role playing. As a player, you just need the player's handbook, the PHB, as we called it. Um, I don't know what the price of the current fifth edition one is, but back when I was playing third, you were looking at about twenty quid. 20 something quid maybe for the player's handbook um you need the player's handbook you need a set of dice which chessix dice which are the ones that most people i think pick up and generally about a tenner for a set although it's missing a few d6s you cobble them from board games and things you have um so for sake of an argument let's say just to start playing D, &D you need to spend about 30 quid that's, a, that, that's your PHB, that's your dice, a notepad, pencils, printing out a character sheet, whatever. If you're going to be the DM, you need the player's handbook, you need the Dungeon Master's Guide, you need the Monster Manual, you need the dice. You need more time than the players. So you are looking at probably, let's say, 60 quid as a kickoff to start. Um... But once you have what you have, role playing uh, D and D, I'll rephrase, is not expensive um, because you don't need to buy anything else. If you want to buy um, adventure modules or an extra book, you know, um, I don't know, uh, Ultimate Fighters or something like that, whatever, that's on you. You don't need it. Everything you need is in that initial set of books. Um, Pathfinder is the same. Call of Cthulhu is the same. Um, whatever your game of choice, it's the same. You know, most games, pardon me, don't require you to buy three books like D&D does for a Dungeon Master. It's just one book. So the players just have to buy that. As long as the DM's got one and there's a one or two to go around the players, yeah, nice, simple, easy peasy. Money is not an issue in role-playing games. Wargaming, now you're, now you're talking. My experience with wargaming um, is Warhammer 40k, Warhammer Fantasy, a little bit of um, Kings of War I've tried, I've tried War Machine, I've tried, you know, I've tried a, a, a small number, but they all basically suffer from the same problem in that your rule book is generally either moderately priced, depending on the game, or you're looking like a, uh, a, um, a games workshop where you're looking at nearly £35, £40 for a rule book. Then you're looking at 30 quid for your army book. You know, I'm going to use, I'm using 40k for the example, because it is my primary uh, war game of choice. And then you're looking at the models. So realistically, 
once you've got your rule book and you've picked your army and you've bought the codex, you, you've spent 60 quid to buy a basic um, combat patrol sort of thing. Um, they don't call them combat patrol box sets now. They're called something else. It forgets my, um, seeps out my ears right now. But that's about 70 odd quid, I think, from what I recall. Um, and even if you were to buy them separately, you know, two troop choices are generally 30 odd quid a box. And a character's 20. You know, the, the starting box gives you maybe a little extra something like a transport or a tank or something like that. But you're still looking at well over 100 quid to get going. And that's the absolute minimum. Because again, assuming you've gathered D6s from the various board games you own, and you've got a tape measure in the car in the garage, and you can make terrain up initially on your table with whatever uh, until you find something that you want or like. But then to expand an army for wargaming costs a small fortune. You know, um, back when I had money. I can afford to buy two or three boxes a month. Now I'm lucky if I buy something every couple of months. Then you've got the thing of painting it. Assuming you want to. You know, but let's be honest, most people do. Wargaming is not a cheap hobby to get into. And it's very time consuming. Because um, players need to paint, build and paint their models. And then when you come to it, a game is going to last you a couple of hours to an evening. Um, or if you've got enough models to play a big game, that's a day, yeah, you know, or better part of a day. Um, so, yeah, I get it. War game is expensive. It's not an excuse not to get into it, although pretty, you know, admittedly, current um, economic climbs is a bit difficult. Collectible card games. Yeah, I'm going to have to side on the expensive here. I used to play Magic the Gathering, um... Both versions of the uh, Call of Cthulhu collectible card game or living card game that Fantasy Flight did. Um, I've done the uh, both versions of the 40k card game that came out, the Warhammer Fantasy card game that came out. And you know what? These things are just... I wish I could use the word I want to use on YouTube, but I'm not going to. These things are bloody expensive. Because they're great if you are just a casual mod you play with a couple of mates and you pick up a starter here and you cut there and you buy a random couple of boosters here and then you just tweak things and you just play for schnitz and giggles fantastic but if you really want to get into a game like magic you are spending a lot of money when i was really into it in the mid 90s i would be buying a whole booster display every three months when every new set come out and that was nearly 60 quid a box every single time. And I'd get all the commons, and I'd get most of the uncommons, and I'd probably get about a third of all the rares. And then you're either trading, or you're going online, or going to stores, and you're spending ridiculous amounts of money to buy cards. Individual cards. You know. Um, at some point, I will do Magic the Gathering as another video of games I have played, and touch upon this in a, 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 another way. But collectible card games, unless you get something like Fantasy Flight does, which has a um, what they call a living card game, where you get everybody gets the same cards in a pack. Um, everybody has the same thing. That's great. That's not so expensive. But most collectible card games don't do that. They follow a booster um, format. And you, if you really want to get into something like that, you are spending a shed load of money. Board games are expensive. I, I know there's this, um, and I'm not talking Monopoly and Clue. I'm talking about the fact of the uh, hobby gaming side of non-standard board games, um, Talisman or um, Lord of the Rings Risk or. Uh, well, maybe not that much that one. You know, you know the things I'm talking about. They're like 60 quid a box plus. You know, they are ridiculously complicated. Um, what was the one that we used to... Imperium Galactica. That's one of the, uh, my old friends used to have. And basically, it would take you about an hour and a half to set the damn thing up. 
you'd play for about two hours and you'd be lucky if you got the first turn of the game in. And this was a game that I think was like nearly 80 quid and this is about 15 years ago. It's ridiculous the price that hobby gaming style board games go for. Um, I get it. You know, they're not going to sell millions of them like they do with Monopoly and Scrabble. So the price goes up. But diggity damn, you know. Um, if you, if you, I know people who are really big into the hobby uh, board gaming side of things, but damn, the amount of money that they must spend, yeah, you know, it just blows my my mind. You know, um, and I can't. The, the, <laughs> so like the last thing is is LARPing, live action role play, and I I don't know enough about that to comment on it, but I don't imagine that's cheap either. Um, the the weapons, the costumes, and everything else. When I have seen prices for them, at a few conventions are online. They are ridiculous. You know how people justify. I know people make them and they craft them and all this, but jeez. So is hobby gaming expensive? For the purposes of this short video, I'm going to say yes, unless role playing is your thing, or you are prepared to play a collectible card game in a very basic, very casual fashion with a few mates, with some beers and drinks and just play for fun. It's a problem with the hobby. I think it's something that seriously needs to be addressed. Um, I know when I talk about the wargaming side of it, I'm mainly talking about Games Workshop. Um, I find... Some companies like Mantic with their, um, I can't remember what their sci-fi version is called, but the fancy one is called Kings of War. And I actually love their models. Um, I, for my Ninth Age Army, um, I bought two, two boxes of skeletons, I think it was, um, and a metal vampire count. You know, and this was enough to build two big units and have this one character model. And that was for less than the cost of a single 10-man squad of space plastic space marines. You know, and it's wow. The whole idea of saying that Games Workshop need to lower the prices is something I could do an entirely different video on. So I'm not going to drag on it here. But generally, so if I to say that the, the mo main aspects of hobby gaming do need to lower their prices. I know we are, realistically, we're a niche hobby. Um, you know, there are not millions of us around the world. Um, or not millions and millions of us, anyway. Um, but I do think that, of all the things that get in the way of potentially getting new players into our hobbies, cost is one of them. I think a lot of people now, with the influx of um, fantasy and sci-fi films, movies, shows, things like Stranger Things on Netflix, I think in their heads, I think people are more... Um, what's the right word? Are more accepting of fantasy, sci-fi, horror, and the things you can do with it. I think a lot of that started with the Lord of the Rings films, but it has built up a lot more. People seem to be more aware of the various aspects of hobby gaming now, but cost and time are the two things that seem to put them off. Time I can't do much about. You can't do much about it. Companies can't do much about it. But prices need to drop. I know we're living in an age now where prices are rising across everything from shopping to petrol, but it's going to impact these companies a lot more. I know Games Workshop had massive profits during um, the lockdown, COVID lockdown because people were stuck at home. They built and painted models. You know, they couldn't go out down the pub. That's great. Did them really, really well. But now the world's back to normal-ish. People just don't have the money to spend out on this stuff unless they've already got sizable armies or a massive collection of cards or lots of board games already that they haven't played 
I think it's going to be a hard time coming up for a lot of publishers and game manufacturers. You want to get new blood into the hobby. Prices need to be reduced. You need to make things like magic available to disposable income again. And, you know, um, using Warhammer again. When codices were smaller and they were about 15 to 20 pounds a book, I used to buy all of them. Can't do that now. They're 30 pounds a book. They're twice the price. And that's absolutely ludicrous. Lower the prices, more people will buy it, more profit. I know that sounds counter logical to some people. They'll go, yeah, but if something sells for 30, you can make more money than selling slightly more than that. Yeah, but it's more about getting your product out there, getting your product purchased and played. Then you get the money coming in. Role playing games don't seem to be so much hit by this. Um, they just suffer on the fact that every so many years, and admittedly, Warhammer does the same problem. They have to throw out a new edition because then everybody has to buy it, which means they get a big, big influx of cash. Anyway, this is turning into a little bit of random pricing, which was not my intent. Um, my point is simply to say that, yes, with the exception of role-playing games, I think hobby gaming is an expensive hobby. You, you can do it small, but most people don't have the patience for that. You know, if you're a war gamer, you want a thousand point army, you want a fifteen hundred point army, you want a two thousand point army, and so on. And then you want to start a second army and a third, uh, and you can't do that realistically unless you you've got some strange amount of disposable cash that just no, the rest of us don't have. Board games are far too expensive. Um, they need to be, they need to drop in price a lot as well. You know, you want to get people into buying this stuff. It needs to be affordable. Anyway, that's just a little... Not It wasn't meant to be a rant in any way, shape or form. Um, let's get this up a little bit. I have been looking down here. I'm sorry, I've been having to carry the camera as it doesn't fit. Well, by phone, it doesn't fit on top of the monitor anymore. Um, it wasn't meant to be a rant on pricing and things. It was really just meant to be talk about the pricing of things anyway what do you think is your particular aspect of hobby gaming too expensive um do you think it's off-putting to potential new players um if you don't i'd be interested to see why um throw your comments down below give me a little thumbs up because it you know youtube likes that it helps me get seen a bit more and uh, hit the subscribe button I look forward to seeing your comments and responses in those little bits down below. Uh, and until next time, guys, thank you for watching. Take care. Good gaming.